Ahem. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, uh, everyone. And welcome to Octopiece Theater. Uh, my name is Octo, and today I will be fulfilling my end of the bargain, uh, to be reading for you a piece, uh, from the year, uh, 2007. Uh, this is, uh, DreamWorks. Duel. Duel. Two. 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 All or All nothing. Or no Thousand like Dragons. Yes. Octobies. Thousand Dragon, thank you for the nine months. Duel, uh, duel, two, two, two. All or all nothing. nothing. Grizzle B, Octobies. thank you for the 22 months as well. I appreciate that. Heaven, Heaven or, hell. or hell. Duel, duel, duel. One. one. Let's, Let's rock. rock. I, I eat puppies. Thank you also for the eight months. Thank you. <clears throat> so. Here comes a daredevil. Ahem. <clears throat> Uh, Absolute NC, thank you for the the Twitch. Heaven or, or hell? And Duel. Duel. One, one. Let's Cybergen, go. thank you for oh the boy, six it's months. Happening. Much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna turn alerts off when I start, just so that I can get through the whole thing. So, having theater training, instead of just reading this dialogue line for line, I have actually obtained the screenplay to B-movie, complete with uh, shot directions and everything. So, I I will be reading everything out. Uh, I will be painting a Terminator picture. Terminator 100 bonus, then just so you know, cause of the octopus thing, the masterpiece theater opening is a public domain classical piece called, called Rondo, Rondo that you could totally yep. be playing right I'm now. I'm aware, Dever Boy, thank you, but I wanted something that would play throughout the entire uh, production, not just at the beginning. But thank you, I have it under control. Don't worry, alright? I have it. I, 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 this is... Not something you need to worry about, all right? <clears throat> Did I rehearse? Oh, fuck no. Are you kidding me? No, I fly- I'm better flying by the seat of my pants. <clears throat> all right. Now, I'm gonna be turning off alerts for, uh... This is actor's nightmare. This is, like, on the fly. I'm gonna be turning off alerts during the reading, uh... Little pants. Guess I'll keep this masterpiece on in the background while I clean my apartment. Have fun. Thank you, uh... Duel, Tony duel, the two, Tones two, for the 100. Nothing. Miss Tweedums. Got my popcorn for this. Miss Tweedums, thank you for the 11 months. <laughs> so I want, to let, I want to let everybody get their alerts or resubs out now, because while the... Actually, you know what? I should change the title to... Uh, alerts silenced during performance. Much like the reading of a real, uh, much like a live performance of anything, uh, Heaven please silence your cell phones. Duel, duel. One, one. Let's, Let's rock. rock! Uh, US of Penn, thank you for the 33 months. Ahem. <clears throat> thank you. Whoa! Oh my god, JC, a bomb! A bomb. Kaylee Nicole! Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they are not, they are not muted yet. Um, ahem. No flash photography during the performance. Please put your cell phones on silent. Terminator 100 right. bonus. Then also no flash photography. No flash photography. I don't care that he's on a computer screen right. and can't see it. It's uh, always a dick move. No recording this performance. No bootlegging. Uh, if you record this and upload it on the internet, I will find you, and I will uh, give you a very disappointed head shake. I'll be very disappointed in you. Okay. <clears throat> so, without further ado, if everybody's got everything they need to take care of out of the way, I will be silencing the alerts, and we will begin the performance of Jerry Seinfeld and DreamWorks 2007 film, 
B movie. Thank you. <clears throat> Cold open. Three cards. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Intro to Barry. Interior. Benson House. Day. Angle on. Sneakers on the ground. Camera pans up to reveal Barry Benson's bedroom. Angle on Barry's hand flipping through different sweaters in his closet. Yellow black, yellow black, yellow black, yellow black, yellow black. Ooh, black and yellow. Angle on Barry wearing the sweater he picked looking in the mirror. Yeah, let's shake it up a little. He picks the black and yellow one. He then goes to the sink, takes the top off container of honey, and puts some honey into his hair. He squirts some in his mouth and gargles. He then takes the lid off the bottle and rolls some on like deodorant. Interior, Benson House Kitchen, continuous. Barry's mother, Janet Benson, yells him with Barry. Barry, breakfast is ready. Interior, Barry's room, continuous. Coming! Phone ringing. Barry's antennae vibrate as they ring like a phone. Barry's hands are wet. He looks around for a towel. Hang on a second. He wipes his hand on his sweater and pulls his antenna down to each to his ear and mouth. Hello? His best a his best friend, Adam Flamen, on the other end. Barry? Adam? Can you believe this is finally happening? Can't believe it. I'll pick you up. Barry sticks his stinger in a sharpener. Sound effects buzzing as his stinger is sharpened. He tests the sharpness with his finger. Sound effects. Bing. Looking sharp. Angle on. Barry hovering down the hall, sliding down the staircase banister. Barry's mother, Janet Benson, is in the kitchen. Barry, why don't you use the stairs? Your father paid good money for those. Sorry, I'm excited. Barry's father, Martin Benson, enters. He's reading a newspaper with the headline, Queen gives birth to thousand tuplets, resting comfortably. He is the graduate. We're very proud of you, son. And a perfect report card. All Bs. Barry proud. Ma, I got a thing going here. Barry readjusts his hair, starts to leave. You've got some lint on your fuzz. She picks it off. Ow, that's me. Wave to us. We'll be in row 118,000. Barry zips off. Bye. Barry, I told you. Stop flying in the house. Cut to driving to graduation. Exterior, B suburb, morning. A garage door opens. Barry drives out in his car. Angle on. I don't know why car isn't all caps. Barry's friend, Adam Flamen, standing by the curb. He's reading a newspaper with the headline, Frisbee hits hive, internet down. Beestander. I heard a sound, and the next thing I knew, whammo. Barry drives up, stops in front of Adam. Adam jumps in. Hey, Adam. Hey, Barry. Pointing at Barry's hair. Is that fuzz gel? A little. It's a special day. Finally graduating. I never thought I'd make it. Yeah, three days of grade school, three days of high school. Those were so awkward. Three days of college. I'm glad it took one day off in the middle and just hitchhiked around the hive. It did come back different. They drive by a bee who's jogging. Hi, Barry. Hey, Audie. Growing a mustache? Looks good. Barry and Adam drive from the suburbs into the city. Hey, did you hear about Frankie? Yeah. You going to his funeral? No, I'm not going to his funeral. Everybody knows you sting someone you die. You don't waste it on a squirrel. He was such a hothead. Yeah, I guess he could have just gotten out of the way. They drive through a loop-de-loop. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I love this incorporating the amusement park right into our regular day. I guess that's why they say we don't need vacations. Cut to graduation. Exterior. Graduation ceremony. Continuous. Barry and Adam come to a stop. They exit the car and fly over the crowd to their seats. Boy, quite a bit of pomp. Under the circumstances, they land in their seats. Well, Adam, today we are men. We are B-men. Amen. Hallelujah. Barry hits Adam's forehead. Adam goes to the, into the rapture. An announcement comes over the PA. Students, faculty, distinguished bees, please welcome Dean Buswell. Angle on Dean Buswell steps up to the podium. The podium has a sign that reads, Welcome graduating class of, with train station style flipping numbers after it. Welcome new Hive City graduating class of, the numbers on the podium change to 915. 915! <clears throat> and that concludes our graduation ceremonies. And begins your career at Hunnex Industries. Are we going to pick our job today? I heard it's just orientation. The rows of chairs change in transformer style. A uh, mechanical motion of Universal Studios type tour trams. Buzzwell walks off stage. Whoa, heads up, here we go. Factory. <clears throat> Keep your hands and antenna inside the tram at all times. Ten le las manos y antenas adentro del tram de todos tiempos. I wonder what it's gonna be like. A little scary. Barry shakes Adam. Ah! The tram passes under sign reading Hunnex, a division of Hunesco, a part of the Hexagon Group. Welcome to Hunnex, a division of Hanesco, and part of the Hexagon Group. 
That, this is it. The Hunnex doors open, revealing the factory. Wow. We know that you, as a bee, have worked your whole life to get to the point where you can work for your whole life. Honey begins when our valiant pollen jocks bring the nectar to the hive where our top secret formula is automatically color corrected, scent adjusted, and bubble contoured into this. Trudy grabs a test tube of honey from the technician. Soothing sweet syrup with its distinctive golden glow you all know as, in unison, honey. Trudy flips the flask into the crowd. They laugh and all scramble for it. Angle on, a girl bee catching the honey. That girl was hot. She's my cousin. She is? Yeah, we're all cousins. Right, you're right. At Hunnex, we constantly strive to improve every aspect of bee existence. These bees are stress testing a new helmet technology. A stunt bee in a helmet getting hit with a newspaper, then a shoe, then a fly swatter. He gets up and gives a thumbs up. The graduate bees applaud. What do you think he makes? Not enough. And here we have our latest advancement, the Krellman. Wow, what does that do? Catches a little strand of honey that hangs after you pour it. Saves us millions. Angle on the Krellman machine. Bees with hat with hand-shaped hats on, rotating around a wheel to catch strips of honey. Adam's hand shoots up. Can anyone work on the Krellman? Of course. Most bee jobs are small ones, but bees know that every small job, if it's done well, means a lot. There are over 3,000 different bee occupations, but choose carefully because you'll stay in the job you pick for the rest of your life. The bees cheer. Yay! Angle on. Barry's smile dropping slightly. Same job? For the rest of your life? Uh, I don't know. I didn't know that. What's the difference? And you'll be happy to know that bees as a species haven't had one day off in 27 million years. So you'll just work us to death? <laughs> we'll sure try. Everyone laughs except Barry. The tram drops down a log flume style steep drop. Cameras flash as all the bees throw up their hands. The frame freezes into a snapshot. Barry looks concerned. The tram continues through two doors. Form dissolved to Walking the Hive. Interior, Hunnex Lobby. Angle on, the log flume photo as Barry looks at it. Wow, that blew my mind. What's the difference? Adam, how could you say that? One job forever? That's an insane choice to have to make. Well, I'm relieved. Now we only have to make one decision in life. But Adam, how could they never have told us that? Barry, why would you question anything? We're bees. We're the perf most perfectly functioning society on Earth. They walk by a newspaper stand with a sandwich board reading, Bees go berserk. Stings the seven, then self angle on a bee filling his car's tank with from a honey pump he fills the honey some then takes a swig for himself newspaper bee to the guzzling bee hey barry and adam begin to cross the street yeah but adam did you ever think that maybe a little too uh, we work a little too well around here they stop in the middle of the street the traffic moves perfectly around them like what give me an example i don't know but you know what i'm talking about they walk off meet the jocks the sound of pollen jocks pan down from the hunnick statue uh, please clear the gate. Royal Nectar Force on approach. Royal Nectar Force on approach. Wait a second. Check it out. Hey, those are pollen jocks. Wow. Four patrol bees fly in through the hive's gigantic gothic entrance. The patrol bees are wearing fighter pilot helmets with black visors. I've never seen them this close. Uh, they know what it's like to go outside the hive. Yeah, but some of them don't come back. The nectar from the pollen jocks is removed from their backpacks, loaded into trucks on their way to Hunnex. A small crowd forms around the patrol bees. Each one has a pit crew that takes their nectar. Lou Ladoka hurries to a pit crew along. You guys did great! You're monsters! You're sky freaks! I love it! I love it! Schoolgirls are jumping up and down and squealing nearby. I wonder what those guys... I wonder where those guys have just been. I don't know. Their day's not planned. Outside the hive, flying who knows where, doing who knows what. You can't just decide on day... One day to be a pollen jock. You have to be bred for that. Right. Pollen jocks crossing close proximity to Barry and Adam. Some pollen falls off onto Barry and Adam. Look at that. There's more pollen than you and I will ever see in a lifetime. I... It's just a status symbol. I think it's been made too big deal out of. Uh, perhaps unless you're wearing it. And the ladies see you wearing it. Angle on two girl bees. Those ladies? Aren't they our cousins too? Distant. Distant. Angle on two pollen jocks. Look at those two. Couple of hive harries. Let's have some fun with them. The pollen jocks approach. Barry and Adam continue to talk to the girls. Must be so dangerous being a pollen jock. Oh, yeah. Once... One time a bear had me pinned up against a mushroom. Uh, he had one paw in my throat with the other one slapping me back and forth across the face. Oh my! I never thought I'd knock him out. Uh, and what were you doing all of this? Obviously I was trying to alert the authorities. The girl swipes some pollen off of Adam with a finger. I can autograph that if you want. A little gusty out there today, wasn't it, comrades? Yeah, gusty. You know, we're going to hit the sunflower patch about six miles from here tomorrow. Six miles, huh? Barry. It's a puddle jump for us, but maybe you're not up for it. Maybe I am. You are not. 
We're going. 0900 at J-Gate. Uh, whoa. Uh, leaning in on top of Barry. What do you think, Buzzy Boy? Are you B enough? I might be. It depends on what 0900 means. Cut to the balcony. Interior, Benson House balcony. Later, Barry is standing on a balcony alone, looking out over the city. Martin Benson enters, sneaks up behind Barry, and gooses him in his ribs. Hunnix! Oh, Ted, you surprised me. <laughs> what have you been doing? Uh, have you decided what you're interested in, son? Well, there are a lot of choices, but you only get one. Martin laughs. Dad, do you ever get bored doing the same job every day? Son, let me tell you something about stirring. Makes a stirring motion. You grab the stick, and you just move it around. And you stir it around, and you get yourself into a rhythm. It's a beautiful thing. You know, Dad, the more I think about it, the more the honey feel just isn't right for me. Uh, are you thinking of making what? Are you, and you're thinking of what? Making balloon animals? That's a bad job for a guy with a stinger. Well, no. Janet, your son's not sure what he wants if he wants to go into honey. Oh, Barry, you are so funny sometimes. I'm not trying to be funny. You're so, you're not funny. You're going into honey. Ah, son, the stirrer. You're going to be a stir? No one's listening to me. Wait until you see the sticks I have for you. I can't say anything I want right- I can say anything I want right now. I'm gonna get an ant tattoo. Let's open him some fresh honey to celebrate. Maybe I'll pierce my thorax! To honey! Shave my antenna! To honey! Shack up with a grasshopper! Get a gold tooth! Start calling everybody DOG! Cut to job placement. Exterior, Hunnex Lobby. Continuous. Angle on, a bee bus stop. One group of bees stands on the pavement, and another group hovers above them. A double-decker bus pulls up. The hovering... Bees get on top of the level, and the standing bees get on the bottom. Barry and Adam pull up outside of Hunnex. Can't believe we're starting work today. Today is the day! Adam jumps out of the car. Come on! All the good jobs will be gone! Yeah, right. Angle on board reading, job placement board. Buzzwell, the bee processor, is at the counter. Another bee applicant, Shady Shrimpkin, is exiting. Is it still available? Hang on. He looks at the changing numbers on the board. Two left, and one of them's yours. Congratulations, son! Step to the side, please. Yeah! Uh, what did you get? Picking the crud out. That is stellar. Wow. Couple of newbies? Yes, sir. Our first day, and we are ready. Well, step on up and make your choice. Angle on. A chart listing different sectors of Hunnex. Heating, cooling, viscosity, Krellman, pollen counting, stunt bee, pouring, stir, humming, regurgitating, front desk, hair removal, inspector number seven, chief, link coordinator, stripe supervisor, antenna ball polisher, mite wrangler, swatting counselor, wax monkey, W uh, wing brusher, hive keeper, restroom attendant. You want to go first? No, you go. Oh my, what's available? Restroom attendant is always open, and not for the reason you think. Any chance of getting onto the Krellman, sir? Sure, you're on! He plops the Krellman hat on Adam's head. Angle on the job board. The columns read, Occupation, Positions Available, and Status. The middle column has numbers on the right column, has job openings flipping between open, pending, and closed. Oh, I'm sorry, the Krellman's just closed out. Oh, he takes the hat off, Adam. Wax Monkey's always open, though. The Krellman goes from closed to open. And the Krellman just opened up again! What happened? Well, whenever a bee dies, that's an opening. See that? He's dead. Dead. Another dead one. Dead. Deadified. Two more dead. Dead from the neck up. Dead from the neck down. But that's life! Angle on. Barry's disturbed expression. Oh, this is so hard. Heating, cooling, stunt bee, pour, stir, humming, inspect number seven, link coordinator, stripe supervisor, antenna ball polisher, mite wrangler, Barry, Barry, what do you think I should- Barry? Barry? Barry is gone. Cut to Lou Laduca speech. Exterior, J-Gate, same time. Splits, Jackson, Buzz, Lou, and two other bees are going through final pre-flight check. Barry enters. All right, we've got the sunflower patch in quadrant nine. Geranium window box on, sun on Sutton Place. Barry's antenna rings like a phone. What happened to you? Where are you? Barry whispers throughout. I'm going out. Out? Out where? Out there. Oh, no. I have to, before I go to work for the rest of my life. You're gonna die. You're crazy. Hello? Oh, another call coming in. You're cra- Barry hangs up. Angle on. Lula Duca. If anyone's feeling brave, there's a Korean deli on 83rd that gets their roses today. Hey, guys. Well, look at that. Isn't that the kid we saw yesterday? Hold on. Flight deck's restricted. It's okay, Lou. We're gonna take him up. Splits and Jackson's chuckle. Really? Feeling lucky, are you? A younger, smaller bee than Barry, Chet, runs up with a release waiver for Barry to sign. Uh, sign here. Just initial that, thank you. Okay, you got a rain advisory today, and you all know that bees cannot fly in rain, so be careful. As always, watch your brooms, honey sticks, dogs, birds, bears, and bats. Also, I got a couple of ports of root beer being poured on us. Murphy's in a home because of it, just babbling like a cicada. That's awful. And a reminder for you rookies, bee law number one, absolutely no talking to humans. All right? Launch positions! The jocks get into formation, chanting as they move. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow! 
Hello! Uh, are you ready for this hot shot? Yeah, yeah, bring it on. Very nods, terrified. Wind, check! Antenna, check! Nectar pack, check! Wings, check! Stinger, check! Scared out of my shorts, check! Okay, ladies, let's move it out! Everyone flips their goggles down. Pit crew bees crank their wings and remove their starting blocks. We hear a loud humming. Pound those petunias, you strip- you stripped stem suckers! All of you, drain those flowers! The flight deck guy in deep crutch behind hand signals them an archway in the back, uh, at the backwash from the bee wings flutters his jumpsuit. <laughs> but Barry follows everyone. Flying with the jocks. The bee- the bees climb over treetops in formation. Barry is euphoric. Wow! I'm out! I can't believe it! I'm out! So blue! <laughs> I feel so fast and free! Box guy! Whoa! They fly by several bicyclists and approach a patch of flowers. Flowers! This is Blue Leader. We have Rose's visual. Bring it around 30 degrees to hold. Roses. 30 degrees. Roger, bring it around. Many pollen jocks break off from the main group. They use their equipment to collect nectar from the flowers. Barry uh, flies down to watch the jocks collect their nectar. Stand aside, kid. It's got a bit of a kick. The jock fires the gun and recoils. Barry watches the gun fill up with nectar. Oh, is that a one nectar collector? Uh, you ever seen pollination up close? No, sir. He takes off, and, ex and the excess pollen dust fall falls, causing the flowers to come back to life. I pick up some pollen over here, sprinkle it over here, maybe a dash over here, pinch on that one, see that? It's a little bit of magic, ain't it? The flowers perk up as he pollinates. Wow, that's amazing. Why do we do that? That's pollen power, kid. More pollen, more flowers, more nectar, more honey for us. Cool. The jock winks at Barry. Barry rejoices the other, rejoins the other jocks in the sky. They swoop over a pond, kissing the surface. We see their image reflected in the water. They're really moving. They fly over a fountain. I'm picking up a lot of bright yellow. Could be daisies. Don't we need those? Copy that visual. We see what appear to be yellow flowers in a green field. They go in a deep bank and dive. Hold on, one of the flowers seems to be on the move. Say again? Are you reporting a moving flower? Affirmative. Tennis game. The pollen jocks land. It is a tennis court with dozens of tennis balls. A couple, Vanessa and Ken, play tennis. The bees land in the midst of the group of balls. Uh, that was on the line! Oh, that was on the line! The group bees start walking amongst immense yellow globes. This is the coolest, what is it? They stop a ball with a white line and look up at it. I don't know, I'm loving this color. It smells good, not like a flower, but I like it. Yeah, fuzzy. Chemically. Uh, careful guys, it's a, it's a little less, it's a little grabby. Barry lands on the ball and collapses. Oh, my sweet lord of bees. Hey, candy brain, get off there. Barry attempts to pull his legs off, but they stick. Problem! A tennis shoe and a hand and a frame. Picks up the ball with Barry underneath it. Guys? This could be bad. Affirmative. Vanessa walks in, walks back to the service line. Bounces the ball each time it bounces. And the other bees cringe and gasp. Angle on. Barry, terrified. Pure dumb luck he's not getting squished. Very close. Gonna hurt. Mama's little boy. You are out of position, rookie! Vanessa's serving. We see Barry and the ball up against a racket and she brings it back. She tosses the ball into the air. Barry's eyes widen. The ball is struck and the rally is on. Come on! Uh, coming in you like a missile! Coming in at you like a missile! <clears throat> Ken hits the ball back. Barry feels the G-forces. Ahem. <clears throat> uh, angle on. The pollen jocks watching Barry pass by them in slow motion. Help me! You know, I didn't think these are flowers. Should we tell him? I think he knows. What is this? Uh, Vanessa hits the arc, the high arcing lob. Ken waits, poised for the return. We see Barry having trouble maneuvering the ball from fatigue. Match point! Angle on, Ken running up. He has a killer look in his eyes. He's gonna hit the ultimate overhead smash. You can just start packing up, honey, because I believe you're about to eat it. Angle on, pollen jocks. Ahem! Ken is distracted by the jock. What? No! He misses badly. The ball rockets into oblivion. Barry is still hanging on. Angle on Ken berating himself. Oh, you cannot be serious! We hear the ball whistling and Barry screaming. Yowza! The ball, uh, SUV. The ball flies through the air and lands in the middle of the street. It bounces into the street again and sticks in the grill of an SUV. Interior, car engine, continuous. Barry's POV. The grill of the SUV sucks him up. He tumbles through a black tunnel, whirling veins and pistons. Oh! 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 <laughs> Barry, uh, R.E. Grasshopper. You gross! Interior, car, continuous. The car is packed with typical suburban family. Mother, father, eight-year-old boy, little girl in a car seat, and grandmother. A big slobbery dog is behind a grate. Barry pops into the passenger compartment, hitting the mother's magazine. There's a bee in the car! They all notice the bee and start screaming. Ah! Barry tumbles around the car. We see faces from his POV. Do something! I'm driving! Barry flies by a little girl in her car seat. She waves hello. Hi, bee! 
He's back here. He's gonna sting me. The car swerves around the road. Barry flies into the back where the slobbery dog snaps at him. Barry deftly avoids the jaws and gross flies flying spittle. Nobody move. If you don't move, he won't sting you. Freeze. Everyone in the car freezes. Barry freezes. They stare at each other, eyes going back and forth, waiting to see who will make the first move. Barry blinks. He blinked! Granny pulls out a can of hairspray. Spray him, Granny! Granny sprays the hairspray everywhere. What are you doing? It's hairspray. Extra hold. Kill it! Barry gets sprayed uh, back by the hairspray, then sucked out of the sunroof. Cut to City Street. Continuous. Wow, the tension level out here is unbelievable. I've got to get home. As Barry flies down the street, it starts to rain. He nimbly avoids the rain at first. Whoa, whoa, can't fly in the rain, can't fly in the rain, can't fly- A couple drops hit him. His wings go limp and he starts falling. Mayday, mayday, be going down! Be Barry sees a window ledge and aims for it, and just makes it. Shivering and exhausted, he crawls into an open window as it closes. Sequence, Vanessa saves the day. Interior of Vanessa's apartment, continuous. Inside the window, Barry shakes off the rain like a dog. Vanessa, Ken, Andy, and Anna enter the apartment. Ken, can you close the window, please? Huh? Oh. Hey! Check out my new resume. I made it a fold-out brochure. See? Folds out. Ken holds up his brochure with photos of himself and resume in the middle. Angle on. Barry hiding behind the curtains, and Ken closes the window. Oh, no more humans. I don't need this. Barry hovers up in the air and throws himself into the glass. Ow! What was that? He does it again, then multiple more times. Maybe this time. 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 Barry jumps onto the drapes. Drapes! That is diabolical. It's fantastic. It's got all my special skills, even my top 10 favorite movies. What's your number one? Star Wars? Oh, I don't go for that. <laughs> Gotta stop. Angle on Barry. No wonder we're not supposed to talk to him. They're out of their minds. When I was when I walk out of a job interview, they're flabbergasted. They can't believe the things I say. Barry looks around and sees the light bulb fixture in the middle of the ceiling. Oh, there's the sun. Maybe that's a way out. Barry takes off his head's uh Barry takes off and heads straight for the light bulb, his, P his POV. The 75 watt label grows and getting closer. I don't remember the sun having a big 75 on it. Barry hits the bulb and is knocked silly. He falls into a bowl of guacamole. Andy dips his chip in the guacamole with Barry on it. Angle on Ken and Andy. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what. You know what? I predicted global warming. I can feel it getting hot. At first, I thought it was just me. Barry's POV, giant human mouth opening. Wait, stop! B! Kill it! Kill it! They all jump from their chairs. Andy looks around for something to use. Ken comes in for the kill with a big Timberland boot in each hand. Stand back! These are winter boots! Vanessa enters and stops Ken from squashing Barry. Wait, don't kill him! Close up on Barry's puzzled face. You know I'm allergic to them. This thing could kill me! Uh, why does his life have any less value than yours? She takes a glass tumbler and places it over Barry. Why does his life have any less value than mine? Is that your statement? I'm just saying... All life has value. You don't know what he's capable of feeling. Barry looks up through the glass and watches his conversation, astounded. Vanessa rips Ken's resume in half and slides it under the glass. My brochure. There's a moment of eye contact as she carries Barry to the window. She opens it and sets him free. There you go, little guy. I'm not scared of them, but you know, it's an allergic thing. Hey, why don't you put that on your resume brochure? It's not funny. My whole face could puff up. Maybe one of your special skills. You know, knocking someone out is also a special skill. Exterior, window still continuous. Barry stares over the window frame. He can't believe what's just happened, and it's still raining. Sequence, Barry speaks. Exterior, window still. Later, Barry is still staring through the window. Inside, everyone's saying their goodbyes. Vanessa, next week. Yogurt night? Uh, yeah, sure can. You know, whatever. You can put carob chips in there. Good night. It's supposed to be less calories or something. Bye. She shuts the door. Vanessa starts cleaning up. Gotta say something. She saved my life. Gotta say something. All right, here it goes. Barry flies in. Interior, Vanessa's apartment continuous. Barry hides himself on different products placed among the kitchen shelves. He hides on a bumblebee tuna can and a greetings from Coney Island muscle man postcard on the fridge. What do I say? I really get in trouble. He starts looking at Vanessa. It's B law. You're not supposed to talk to humans. I can't believe I'm doing this. I I've got to. Oh, I can't do it. Come on. No. Yes. No. Do it. I can't. How should I start it? You like jazz? No, that's no good. Here she comes. Speak, you fool. As Vanessa walks by, Barry takes a deep breath. Uh, hi. Vanessa dropped his, drops a stack of dishes and hops back. I'm sorry. You're talking. Yeah, I know, I know. You're talking. I know, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay, it's fine. It's just, I know I'm dreaming, but I don't recall going to bed. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure this is very disconcerting. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a bit of a surprise to me. I mean, you're a bee. Yeah, I'm a bee, and you know I'm not supposed to be doing this, but... They, well, all try to kill me, and if it wasn't for you, I mean, I had to thank you. It's just uh, the way I was raised. 
Vanessa, Vanessa intentionally jabs her hand with a fork. Ow! That was a little weird. I'm talking to a bee. Yeah, I'm talking to a bee. Anyway, and a bee is talking to me. I just want you to know I I'm grateful, and I'm gonna leave now. Wait, 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 wait. How did you learn to do that? What? The talking thing. Same as you did, I guess. Mama, dada, honey. You pick it up. It's very funny. Oh, that's very funny. Yeah, bees are funny. We didn't laugh, we'd cry what, what, with what we had to deal with. <laughs> anyway, can I uh, get you something? Like what? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Coffee? Well, uh, I don't know what... Uh, I don't want to put you put you out. It's no trouble. Unless you're making, anyway. Oh, it takes two minutes. Really? It's just coffee. I hate to impose. Don't be ridiculous. Actually, I would love a cup. Hey, would you, you want a little rum cake? I really shouldn't. Have a little rum cake. No, 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 I can't. Oh, come on. You know, I'm trying to lose a couple micrograms here. Where? Well, it's these stripes don't help. You look great. I don't know if you know anything about fashion. Vanessa starts pouring the coffee through an imaginary cup and directly onto the floor. Are you all right? No. Sequence, rooftop coffee, exterior, Vanessa, Vanessa's roof, later. Barry and Vanessa are drinking coffee on her roof terrace. He is perched on her keychain. He can't get a taxi. He's making the tie in the cab as they're flying up Madison. So he finally gets there. Uh-huh. He runs the steps into the church. The wedding is on. Yeah. And he says, watermelon? I thought you said Guatemalan. Uh-huh. Why, why would I marry a watermelon? Barry laughs. Vanessa doesn't. Oh, it... Is that a bee joke? Yeah, it's the kind of stuff that we do. Yeah, different. So anyway, are you gonna, what are you going to do, Barry? About work? I don't know. I have to do my part for the hive, but I can't do it the way they want. So I know how you feel. You do? Sure, my parents wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor, but I wanted to be a florist. Really? My only interest is flowers. Our new queen was just elected with that same campaign slogan. Oh, anyway, see, there's my hive. Right there. You can see it. Uh, oh, you're in Sheep Meadow. Yeah, you know the turtle pond? Yeah, I'm right off that. Oh, no way. I know that area. So, you know I lost a toe ring there once. Really? Yeah. Why do girls put rings on their toes? Why not? I don't know. It's like putting a hat on your knee. Really? Oh, okay. A janitor in the background charges a light bulb to, changes a light bulb. To him, it appears that Vanessa is talking to an imaginary friend. You all right, ma'am? Oh, yeah, fine. Just having two cups of coffee. Anyway, this has been great. Thanks for the coffee. Barry gazes at Vanessa. Oh, yeah, it's no trouble. Sorry, I couldn't finish it. Vanessa giggles. <laughs> if I did, I'd be up the rest of my life. Um, can I take a piece of this with me? Sure, here, have a crumb. She takes a crumb from the plate and hands it to Barry. Oh, thanks. Yeah, there's an awkward pause. All right. Well, then I guess I'll see you around. Or not. Or, okay, Barry. Uh, and thank you so much again for before. Oh, that? Yeah. Oh, that was nothing. Well, not nothing, but anyway. Vanessa extends her hands and shakes berries gingerly. The janitor watches. The light bulb shorts out. The janitor falls. Cut to sequence. Hunnex. Interior. Hunnex building. Next day. Angle on. A test bee wearing a parachute in a wind tunnel. Hovering through increasingly heavy wind. Signs under a flashing light read. Test in progress and hurricane survival test. Two bees in the lab coats are observing behind glass. This can't possibly work. Well, he's all set to go. We may as well try it. Into the mic. Okay, Dave. Pull the chute. The test bee opens his parachute. He's instantly blown against the, the rear wall. Uh, Adam and Barry enter. Sounds amazing. Oh, it was amazing. And one of the scariest, happiest moments of my life. Humans. Humans. I can't believe you were with humans. Like, giant, scary humans. What were they like? Huge and crazy. They talk crazy. They eat crazy, giant things. They drive around real crazy. And do they try and kill you like on TV? Some of them, but some of them don't. How'd you get back? Poodle. Look, you did it, and I'm glad. You saw whatever you wanted to see out there, and you had your experience, and now you're back. You can pick out your job, and everything can be normal. Uh, angle on lab bees examining a candy corn through a microscope. Well? Well? Well, uh, I met someone. Met someone? Was she bee-ish? Mm, not a wasp. Your parents will kill you. No, 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 not a wasp. Spider? You know, I'm not attracted to spiders. I know everyone else is... They, else it's like the hottest thing with the eight legs and all. I can't get by the face. So who is she? She's a human. Oh, no, 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 no. That didn't happen. You didn't do that. That is B law. You wouldn't break B law. Her name's Vanessa. Oh, oh boy. She's so, oh, nice. She's a florist. Oh, no, 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 no. You're dating a human florist? We're not dating. You're flying outside the hive. You're talking to human beings that attack our homes with power washers and M80s. That's like eighth a stick of dynamite. She saved my life, and she understands me. This is over. Barry pulls out the crumb. Eat this. Barry stuffs the crumb into Adam's face. This is not over. What was that? It's called a crumb. That was so stinging stripey. 
And that's not even what they eat. That just falls off what they eat. Do you know what a Cinnabon is? No. It's bread. Come in here. It's- and cinnamon. Be quiet. And frosting. They heat it up. Sit down. Interior Adam's office. Continuous. Really hot. Listen to me. We are not them. We're us. They're- they're- there's us and there's them. Yes, but who can deny the heart- who can deny the heart that is yearning? Barry rolls his chair around the corridor. There's no yearning. Stop yearning. Listen to me. You have got to start thinking B, my friend. Another B joins in. Thinking B. Wider shot as third B enters, popping up over uh, the cubicle wall. Thinking B. Even wider shot as all the Bs join in. Everybody all together. Thinking B. Thinking B. Thinking B. Sequence. Poolside nagging. Exterior. Backyard. Parents' house. Day. Barry sits on a raft in the hexagon honey pool, legs dangling into the water. Janet Benson and Marty Benson stand over him wearing big 60s sunglasses and cabana-type outfits. The sun shines brightly behind their heads. There he is! He's in the pool! You know what your problem is, Barry? I've got to start thinking, B. Barry, how much longer is this going to go on? It's starting... It's been three days. I don't understand why you're not working. Well, I've got a lot of... I've got a lot of big life decisions I'm thinking about. What life? You have no life. You have no job. You're barely a bee. Barry throws his hands in the air. Ah! Would it kill you to just make a little honey? Barry rolls off the raft and sinks to the bottom of the pool. We hear his parents' muffled voices from the surface. Barry, come out from under there. Your father is talking to you. Martin, would you talk to him? Barry, I'm talking to you. Dissolved to exterior picnic area. Day. Music. Sugar, sugar by the Archies. Oh, sugar, sugar. Ba, 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 ba. Barry and Vanessa are having a picnic. A mosquito lands on Vanessa's leg. She swats it violently. Barry's head whips around aghast. They stare at each other awkwardly in a frozen moment, then burst into hysterical laughter. Vanessa gets up. You coming? Got everything? All set. Vanessa gets into a one-man ultralight plane with a black and yellow paint scheme. She puts on a helmet. You go ahead. I'll catch up. Don't be too long. The ultralight takes off. Barry catches up. They fly side by side. Watch this. Vanessa does a loop. Uh, and flies right into the side of a mountain, bursting into a huge ball of flame. Vanessa! Exterior of Vanessa, uh, Barry's parents' house, continuous. Angle on Barry's face, bursting through the surface of the pool, gasping for air, eyes open in horror. We're still here, Barry. I told you not to yell at him. He doesn't respond to you when you yell at him. Then why are you yelling at me? Because you don't listen. I'm not listening to this. Barry is toweling off, putting on his sweater. Sorry, Mom. I've got to go. Where are you going? Nowhere. I'm meeting a friend. Barry jumps off the balcony and exits, calling after him. A girl? Is that why you can't decide? Bye. I just hope she's B-ish. Exterior, Vanessa's florist shop, day. Vanessa flips the sign to say, sorry we missed you, and locks the door. Angle on, a poster on Vanessa's door for the Tournament of Roses parade in Pasadena. <laughs> so they have a huge parade of just flowers every year in Pasadena? Oh, to be in the Tournament of Roses. That's every florist's dream. Up on a float, surrounded by flowers, crowds cheering. Wow, a tournament. The roses actually compete in athletic events? No, all right, I've got one. How come you don't fly everywhere? It's exhausting. Why don't you run everywhere? Hmm, isn't that faster? Yeah, okay, I see, I see. All right, your turn. Barry and Vanessa walk slash fly down a New York City side street. No other pedestrians near them. Ah, TiVo. You can just freeze live TV? That's insane. Why don't you have any... Uh, what, you don't have anything like that? We have HiVo, but that's just a disease. A horrible, horrible disease. Oh, my. They turn the corner onto a busier avenue and, uh, and people start to swat at Barry. Dumb bees. Uh, you must just want to sting all those jerks. We really try not to sting. It's usually fatal for us. So you really have to watch your temper. Uh, they enter a supermarket. Cut to interior supermarket. Oh, yeah, very carefully. You kick a wall, take a walk, write an angry letter, throw it out. You work through it like any emotion. Anger, jealousy, lust. Barry hops on top of some cardboard boxes in the middle of an aisle. A stock boy, Hector, whacks him with a rolled up newspaper. Oh my goodness, are you okay? Yeah, whoo! Vanessa whacks Hector over the head with a magazine. What is wrong with you? It's a bug. Well, he's not bothering anybody. Get out of here, you creep. Vanessa pushes him, and Hector exits, muttering. What was that? A, a, a pick and save circular? Yeah, it was. How did you know? Uh, it felt like about 10 pages. 75 is pretty much our limit. Boy, you really got that down to a science. Oh, oh, we have to. I lost a cousin to Italian Vogue, I bet. Barry stops, sees the wall of honey jars. What in the name of Mighty Hercules is this? How did this get here? Cute B, Golden Blossom, Ray Liotta, Private Select? Is he that actor? I've heard of him. Why is this here? For people. We eat it. Why? You don't have enough food of your own? Well, yes, we... How do you even get it? Well, bees make it. 
I know who makes it, and it's hard to make it. There's heating and cooling and stirring. You need a whole Krellman thing. It's organic. It's our organic. It's just honeyberry. Just what? Bees don't know about this. This is stealing. A lot of stealing. You've taken our homes, our schools, our hospitals. This is all we have. And it's on sale? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to get to the bottom of all this. He rips the label off the Ray Liotta Private Select. Cut to windshield. Exterior, back of supermarket loading dock later that day. Barry disguises himself by blacking out his yellow lines with a magic marker and putting on some war paint. He sees Hector, the stock boy, with a knife cutting open cardboard boxes filled with honey jars. You almost done? Almost. Barry steps in some honey, making a snapping noise. Hector stops and turns. He's here. I sense it. Hector grabs a box cutter. Barry reacts, hides himself behind the box again. Uh, Hector out loud to nobody in particular. Well, I guess I'll go home now. And we'll just leave this nice honey out with no one around. A beat. Hector protects, uh, pretends to exit. He takes a couple of steps in place. Angle on the honey jar. Barry steps out into a moody spotlight. You're busted, box boy. Aha! I knew I heard something, so you can talk. Barry flies up, stinger out, pushing Hector up against a wall. As Hector backs up, he drops the knife. Oh, I can talk. And now you're gonna start talking. Where are you getting all this sweet stuff? Who's your supplier? I don't know what you're talking about. I thought we all were all friends. The last thing we want is to upset any of you bees. Hector grabs a pushpin. Barry fences with a stinger. You're too late. It's ours now. You, sir, have crossed the wrong sword. You, sir, uh, are about to be lunch for my iguana, Ignacio. Barry and Hector get into cross swords, nose to nose confrontation. Where's the honey coming from? Barry knocks the pushpin out of his hand. Barry puts a stinger up to Hector's nose. Tell me where! Honey Farms. It comes from Honey Farms. Angle on a Honey Farms truck leaving the parking lot. Barry turns, takes off after the truck through an alley. He follows the truck through onto a busy street, dodging a bus and several cabs. Crazy person! He flies through a metal pipe on top of a truck. Uh. Oh! Barry grabs the bicycle, uh, grabs onto a bicycle messenger's backpack. The Honey Farms truck starts to pull away. Barry uses the bungee cord to slingshot himself towards the truck. He lands on the windshield, where the wind plashes into the glass. He looks up to find himself surrounded by what appears to be dead bugs. He climbs across, working his way around the bodies. Oh my, what horrible thing has happened here? Look at these faces. Never knew what hit them. And now we're on the road to nowhere. A mosquito opens his eyes. Psst, just keep still. What? You're not dead? Do I look dead? Hey, man, they will wipe anything that moves. Now, where is your head? Now, where are you headed? To Honey Farms. I'm, uh, I'm onto something hi huge here. I'm going to Alaska. Moose blood. Crazy stuff. Blows your head off. I'm going to Tacoma. What about you? He really is dead. All right. Wiper comes towards them. Uh-oh. What is that? Oh, no. It's a wiper. Triple blade. Triple blade. Jump on. It's your only chance, B. They hang on the wipe. They hang on as the wiper goes back and forth. Uh... Why does everything have to be so doggone clean? How much do you people need to see? Open your eyes! Stick your head out the window! Interior truck cab. Sound effects. Radio. Uh, for NPR News in Washington, I'm Carl Cassell. Exterior windshield. But don't kill no more bugs! The mosquito is flung off the wiper. B Moose blood guy! Barry slides towards the end of the wiper, is thrown off, but he grabs the, air the aerial and hangs on for dear life. Barry looks across the seat and sees a cricket on another vehicle in the exact same predicament. They look at each other and scream in unison. Ah! Another bug grabs onto the aerial and screams as well. Interior truck cab, same time. You hear something? Like what? Like tiny screaming. Turn off the radio. The driver reaches down and presses a button, lowering the aerial. Exterior truck windshield, same time. Barry and the other bug do a choose up to the bottom. Barry wins. Aha! Then finally, uh, then he finally has to let go and gets thrown to the truck horn a atop cab. Moose Blood is inside. Hey, what's up, B-boy? Hey, Blood. Wow, they really get away with that? Interior truck horn later. And it was just an endless row of honey jars as far as the eye could see. Wow. I'm just assuming wherever this honey truck goes, that's where they're getting it. I mean, that honey's ours. Bees hang tight. Well, we're all jammed in there. It's a close community. Not us, man. We on our own. Every mosquito is on his own. But what if you get in trouble? Trouble? You're a, you're a mosquito. You're in trouble. Nobody likes us. They all ju they just all smack at people. See a mosquito? Smack, smack. At least you're out of this. Uh, at least you're out in this world. You must meet a lot of girls. Mosquito girls try to trade up. Get a moth, dragonfly. Mosquito girl don't want a mosquito. A bloodmobile pulls up alongside. Whoa! You have got to be kidding me. Moose blood's about to leave the building. So long, B. Moose blood exits the whore. horn and jumps onto the bloodmobile. <clears throat> Hang on, I need a... <clears throat> hey guys, I knew I'd catch you all down here. Did you bring your crazy straws? He exits the horn! They got out of the horn! <clears throat> 
sequence. The ape, the a apiary. Apiary? Oh, yeah. Exterior, apiary. <clears throat> Later, Barry sees a sign, Honey Farms. The truck comes to a stop. Sound effects. The Honey Farms truck blares its horn. Barry flies out, lands on the hood. Angle on two beekeepers, Freddy and Elmo, uh, walking around to the back of the gift shop. Barry follows them and lands in a nearby tree. Then we throw it in some jars, slap a label on it, and it's pretty much pure profit. What is this place? Bees got brain the size of a pinhead. They are pinheads, both laugh. Angle on Barry reacting. They arrive at the back of a shop where one of them opens a, a smoker box. Hey, check out the new smoker. Oh, sweet. That's the one you want. The Thomas 3000. Smoker? 90 puffs a minute. Semi-automatic. Twice the nicotine. All the tar. They laugh again nefariously. Ha ha ha. Couple of breaths of this, and it knocks them right out. They make the honey, and we make the money. They make the honey, and we make the money? Barry climbs onto the netting of Freddy's hat. He climbs up to the brim and looks over the edge. He sees the epiary boxes as Freddy smokes them. Oh my. As Freddy turns around, Barry jumps into an open apiary box and into an apartment. Howard and Fran are coming to from the smoking. What's going on? Are you okay? Yeah, it doesn't last too long. He coughs a few times. <laughs> How did you get here? Do you know you're in a fake hive with fake walls? Pointing to the picture on the wall. Our queen was moved here. We had no choice. This is your queen? That's a man in women's clothes. That's a drag queen. Boo. The other wall opens. Barry sees a hun uh, hundreds of apiary boxes. What is this? Barry pulls out his camera and starts snapping. Oh no, there's hundreds of them. Bee honey. Our honey is being brazenly stolen on a massive scale. Sequence, Barry tells family. Interior, Barry's parents' house. Living room, later. Barry has assembled his parents, Adam and Uncle Carl. This is worse than anything the bears have done to us, and I intend to do something about it. Oh, Barry, stop. Who told you that humans are taking our honey? That's just a rumor. Do these look like rumors? Barry throws the pictures on the table. Uncle Carl, cleaning his glasses with his shirt tail, digs through a bowl of nuts with his finger. That's a conspiracy theory. These are obviously doctored photos. Barry... How did you get mixed up in all this? Because he's been talking to humans. What? Talking to humans? Oh, Barry. He has a human girlfriend and they make out. Make out? Barry? We do not. You wish you could. Whose side are you on? The bees. Uncle Carl stands up and pulls his pants up to his chest. I dated a cricket once in San Antonio. Man, those crazy legs kept me up all night. Hoochie wah. Barry, this is not, is this what you want to do with your life? This is what I want to do for all our lives. Nobody's worked harder than bees. I remember you coming home some nights so overworked your hands were still stirring. You couldn't stop them. Eh, I remember that. What right do they have to our harder? Hard-earned honey. We're living in two cups a year. They're putting it in lip balm for no reason whatsoever. Even if that's true, Barry, what could one bee do? I'm going to sting them where it really hurts. In the face? No. In the eye? That would really hurt. No. Up the nose? That's a killer. No, there's only one place you can sting the humans. One place where it really matters. <clears throat> Sequence. Hive News at 5. B. Larry King. Inter interior. News studio. Day. Dramatic news music plays as the opening news sequence rolls. We see the Hive at 5 logo, followed by shots of past news events. A B freeway chase. A B beard protest rally. A B pawing at the hive. A bear pawing at the hive as bees flee in panic. Hive at 5. The, the hive's only full hour action news source. Shots of newscasters flash up on the screen with Bob Bumble at the anchor desk. Bob in a sh uh, has a big shock of anchorman hair, gray temples, and overly white teeth. Uh, with Storm Stinger, Sports, and Buzz Larvey, and Jeanette Chung. Jeanette is... <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to copy and paste this. This is a stage direction. This is what it says. I didn't write this. I didn't add this by choice. Jeanette is an Asian bee. Good evening, I'm Bob Bumble. And I'm Jeanette Chung. Our top story, a Tri-County Bee, Barry Benson... Insert Barry's graduation photo is saying he intends to sue the human race for stealing our honey, packaging it, and profiting from it illegally. Interior Bean Studio B. Larry King Live. B. Larry King wearing suspenders and glasses is interviewing Barry. <clears throat> A low third uh, uh, Chiron reels reads uh, B. Larry King Live. Don't forget. Tomorrow on B. Larry King, we're going to go over three former queens all right here in our studio discussing their new book, Classy Ladies, out this week on Hexagon. Tonight, we're talking to B. Barry Benson. Do you ever think I'm just a kid from a hive? I can't do this. Larry, bees have, a, bees have never been afraid to change the world. I mean, what about B. Columbus? B. Gandhi? B. Jesus? Well, where I'm from, you wouldn't think of suing humans. Well, we all think... 
Uh, we were thinking more like stickball candy stores. How old are you? I want to know the entire bee community is supporting you in this case, which is certain to be a trial of the bee century. Thank you, Larry. You know, they have a Larry King in the human world, too. It's a common name. Next week on Be Larry King. No, I mean, he looks like you, and he has a show with suspenders and different colored dots behind him. Next week on Be Larry King. Old guy glasses and these quotes along the bottom of the, from the guests you're watching, even though you just heard them. Bear week next week. They're scary, they're hairy, and they're, and they're here live. Be Larry King exits. Always leans forward, pointy shoulders, squinty eyes, very Jewish. Sequence, flower shop. Interior, Vanessa, interior Vanessa's flower shop, night. Stacks of law books are piled up, legal forms, etc. Vanessa is talking with Ken in their other room. Look, in tennis, you attack the point of weakness. But it was my grandmother, Ken. She's 81. Honey, her backhand's a joke. I'm not going to take advantage of that. Quiet, please. Actual work is going on here. Is this that same B? Yes, it is. I'm helping him sue the human race. What? Barry enters. Oh, hello. Hello, B. Barry flies over to Vanessa. This is Ken. Yeah, I remember you. Timberland, size 10 and a half. Vibram Soul, I believe. Why does he talk again, hon? Listen, you'd better go because you're, we're really busy working. But it's our yogurt night. Oh, bye-bye. She closes the door. Why is yogurt night so difficult? Vanessa enters the back room carrying coffee. Oh, you poor thing. You have... You two have been at this for hours. Yeah, Adam here has, has been a huge help. Angle on an empty Cinnabon box. Adam asleep inside, covered in frosting. How many sugars? Just one. I try not to use the competition. So why are you helping me anyway? Bees have very good qualities. C. Certo. <laughs> uh, and it feels good to have take my mind off the shop. I don't know why. Instead of flowers, people are giving balloon bouquets now. Yeah, those are great if you're three. And artificial flowers. Oh, they just get me psychotic. Yeah, me too. The bent stingers, the pointless pollination. Bees just hate those fake plastic things. There's nothing worse than a daffodil that's had work done. Well, maybe you can make up for me a little bit. Exterior, Vanessa's florist shop. They exit the store uh, and cross to the mailbox. You know, Barry, this lawsuit is a pretty big deal, I guess. And you're sure that you want to go through with this? Am I sure? When I'm done with, when I'm done with the humans, they won't be able to say, Honey, I'm home without paying a royalty. Sequence, meet Montgomery. Exterior, Manhattan Courthouse, day, POV shots. A camera feed turns on, revealing a news person. Uh, Sarah, it's incredible. Uh, Sarah, it's an incredible scene down here in downtown Manhattan where all eyes and ears of the world are anxiously waiting because for the first time in history, we're going to hear for ourselves if a honeybee can actually speak. Angle on Barry, Vanessa, and Adam getting out of the cab. The press spots Barry and Vanessa and pushes in. Adam sits next on Vanessa's shoulder. Interior courthouse, continuous. Barry, Vanessa, and Adam sit at the plaintiff's table. What have we gotten into here, Barry? I don't know, but it's pretty big, isn't it? Can't believe how many humans don't have to be at work during the day. Hey, you think these billion-dollar multinational food companies have good lawyers? Exterior courthouse steps, continuous. A big black car pulls up. Angle on the grill forming the frame. We see the LTM monogram on the hood ornament. The defense lawyer, Leighton T. Montgomery, comes out, squashing a bug on the pavement. Interior courthouse, continuous. Barry shudders. What's the matter? I don't know. I just gotta chill. Montgomery enters. He walks by Barry's table, shaking a honey packet. Well, if it isn't the B team, any of you boys work on this? He chuckles. The judge enters. Witnesses. All rise, the Honorable Judge Bubbleton presiding. All right, case number 4475, Superior Court of New York, Barry B. Benson versus the honey industry is now in session. Mr. Montgomery, you are representing the five major food companies collectively. Angle on Montgomery's briefcase. It has an embossed emblem of an eagle holding a gavel in one talon and a briefcase in the other. A privilege. Mr. Benson, Barry stands. You are representing all bees of the world. Uh, Montgomery, the stenographer and juror, lean in. Uh... Exterior courthouse. The spectators outside freeze. The helicopter angle forward to listen closely. Interior courthouse. Barry. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Ah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yes, Your Honor. We all we are ready to proceed. Courtroom hubbub. Uh, and Mr. Montgomery, your opening statement, please. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my grandmother was a simple woman, born on a farm. She believed it was man's divine right to benefit from the bounty of nature God put before us. If we were to live in the topsy-turvy world Mr. Benson imagines, just think of what it would mean. Maybe I would have to negotiate with the silkworm for the elastic in my britches. Talking bee. How do we know this isn't some sort of holographic motion picture capture Hollywood wizardry? 
They could be using laser beams, robotics, ventriloquism, cloning. For all we know, he could be on steroids. Montgomery leers at Barry, who moves to the stand. Mr. Benson? Barry makes his opening statement. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's no trickery here. I'm just an ordinary bee. And as a bee, honey is pretty important to me. It's important to all bees. We've invented it, we make it, and we protect it with our lives. Unfortunately, there are some people who in this room who think that they can take whatever they want from us. And because we're the little guys. And that what I'm hoping is that after this is all over, you'll see how by taking our honey, you're not only taking away everything we have, but everything we are. Vanessa's smiling, the bee gallery wiping tears away, interior Benson house. Barry's, Barry's family is watching the case on TV. Oh, I wish he would dress like that all the time. So nice, interior courtroom. Later. Call your first witness. So, Mr. Klaus Vanderheyen of Honey Farms. Pretty big company you have there. I suppose so. And I see you also own Honey Burton and Hunron. Yes, they provide beekeepers for our farms. Beekeeper. I find that to be a very disturbing term. I have to say, I don't imagine you employ any bee freers, do you? No, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. No. No, because you don't free bees, you keep bees. And not only that, it seems that a bear would be an appropriate image for a jar of honey. Well, you're very lovable creatures. They're lovable creatures. Yogi Bear, Fozzie Bear, build -a bear You mean like this? Vanessa and the superintendent from her building enter with a giant ferocious grizzly bear. He has a neck collar and chains extending from either side. By pulling the chains, they bring him directly in front of uh, Vander Hayden. The bear lunges and roars. Bears kill bees. How would you like this big hairy head crashing through your living room, biting into your couch, spitting out your throw pillows? Rawr, rawr, the bear reacts. Roar. Okay, that's enough. Take him away. Vanessa and the superintendent pull the bear out of the courtroom. Vander Hayden trembles. The judge glares at him. Uh, Barry questions Sting. So, Mr. Sting, thank you for being here. Your name intrigues me. I have to say, where have I heard it before? Oh, I was with a band called the police. But you have never been a police officer of any kind, have you? No, I haven't. So you haven't. And so, here we have another example of bee culture being casually stolen by a human for nothing more than a prance-about stage name. Oh, please. Have you ever been stung, Mr. Sting? Because I'm feeling a little stung, Sting. Or should I say, Mr. Gordon M. Sumner, the jury gasps. That's not his real name? You idiots! Interior courthouse. Miss... Uh, Mr. Leota, first may I offer my belated congratulations on your Emmy win for a great guest spot on ER in 2005. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I also see from your resume that you're devilishly handsome, but with the churning inner turmoil that's always ready to blow. I enjoy what I do. Is that a crime? Not yet it isn't. But is this what it's come to for you, Mr. Leota? Exploiting tiny, helpless things so you don't have to rehearse your part uh, and learn your lines, sir? Watch it, Benson. I could blow right now. This isn't a good fella. This is a bad fella. Why does some- why doesn't someone step on this little creep and we can all go home? You're all thinking it! Say it! Order! Order in this courtroom! A montage of newspaper headlines follow. New York Post. Bees to humans. Buzz off. New York Telegram. Sue B. Daily Variety. Studio dumps Leota Project. Slams door on unlawful entry too. Candlelight dinner. Interior. Vanessa's apartment. Barry and Vanessa are having a candlelight dinner. Visible be behind Barry and his, uh, is a little missy set box with the flaps open. Well, I just have- I just think that was awfully nice for that bear to pitch in like that. I'm telling you, I think the jury's on our side. Uh, are we doing everything right? You know, legally? I'm a florist. Right, right. Barry raises his glass. Well, here's to a great team. To a great team. They toast. Ken enters. Well, hello. Oh, Ken. Hello. I didn't think you were coming. No, I was just late. I tried to call, but the battery. I didn't think this was gonna go to waste. I So I called Barry. Luckily, he was free. Yeah. Oh. That was lucky. Uh, well, there's still a little left. I could heat it up. Yeah, heat it up. Sure, whatever. Vanessa exits. Ken and Barry look at each other as Barry eats. So I hear you're quite... Oh, so I hear you're quite a tennis player. I'm not much for the game myself. I find the ball a little grabby. Well, that's usually where I sit. Right there. Ken, Barry was just looking at your resume. He agrees with me that eating with chopsticks isn't really a special skill. You think I don't see what you're doing? Hey, look, I know it... I know how hard it is trying to find the right job. We certainly have that in common. Do we? Well, bees have 100% employment, of course, but we do jobs like taking the crud out. That's just what I was thinking about doing. Ken holds up a ta holds his table knife. It slips out of his hand. He goes under the table to pick it up. Ken, I let Barry borrow your razor for his fuzz. I hope that was all right. Ken hits his head on the table. 
I'm gonna go drain the old stinger. Yeah, you do that. Barry exits to the bathroom, grabbing a small piece of variety magazine on the way. Oh, look at that! Ken slams the champagne down on the table. Ken closes his eyes and buries his face in his hands. He grabs a magazine on the way to the bathroom. Interior bathroom continuous. Ken enters, closes the door behind him. He's not happy. Barry is washing his hands. He glances back at Ken. You know, just about had it with your little mind games. What's that? Italian Vogue. Mamma mia, that's a lot of pages. It's a lot of ads. Remember what Van said. Uh, why is your life any more valuable than mine? It's funny. I can't seem to recall that. Ken whacks at Barry with the magazine. He misses and knocks everything off of the vanity. Ken grabs a can of air freshener. I think something stinks in here. He sprays at Barry. I love the smell of flowers. Yeah? How do you like the smell of flames? Ken lights the stream. Not as much. Barry flies in a circle. Ken, trying to stay with him, spins in place. Angle on flames outside of the bathroom door. Ken slips on the Italian Vogue, falls backwards into the shower, pulling the shower curtain. He can, uh, the can hits him in the head, followed by the shower curtain rod and the rubber duck. Ken reaches back, grabs the handheld shower head. He whips around, looking for Barry. Angle on, a water bug near the drain. <laughs> water bug, not taking sides. Barry is on the toilet tank. He comes from behind a shampoo bottle, wearing a chapstick cap as a helmet. Ken, look at me. I'm wearing a chapstick hat. This is pathetic. Ken, turning the hand shower nozzle from ginger to turbo to lethal. I've got issues. Ken fires the water at Barry, knocking him into the toilet. The items from the vanity, empty board, lipstick, eye curler, etc., are on the toilet seat. Ken looks down at Barry. Well, well, well. A royal flush. You're bluffing. Am I? Ken flushes the toilet. Barry grabs the emery board and uses it to surf. He puts his hand on the water while he's surfing. Some water splashes Ken. Surf's up, dude. Aw, oh, poo water! He does some skateboard-style half-pipe riding. Barry surfs out of the toilet. That bull is gnarly. Ken tra tries to get a shot at him with the toilet brush. Except those dirty yellow rings. Uh, Vanessa enters. Kenneth, what are you doing? You know what? I don't even like honey. I don't eat it. We need to talk. She pulls Ken by his ear. Ken glares at Barry. Interior hallway continuous. He's just a little bee. And he happens to be the nicest bee I've ever met in a long time. Long time? What are you talking about? Are there other bugs in your life? No. But there are other things bugging me in life, and you're one of them. Fine. Talking bees. No yogurt night. My nerves are fried from riding this emotional roller coaster. Goodbye, Ken. Ah! Whew. Ken exits. They re-enter, and uh, then re-enters frame. And for your information, I prefer sugar-free artificial sweeteners made by man. He exits again. The door slams behind him. I'm sorry about all that. Ken re-enters. And I know, I know it's got an aftertaste. I like it. I always felt that there was some kind of barrier between Ken and me. Couldn't overcome it. Oh, well. Are you going to be okay for trial tomorrow? Oh, I believe Mr. Montgomery is about out of ideas. She fucks the bee. Adam stin stings... Wait. Why did they write that in the script? That... Hang on. Huh. They must have cut that out in the, in the movie version. <clears throat> Interior courtroom next day. Medium shot of Montgomery standing at his table. We would like to call Mr. Barry Benson to the stand. Now, that's a good idea. You can really see he's considered one of the best lawyers. Oh, Barry rolls his eyes. He gets up, takes the stand. A juror in a striped shirt applauds. Uh, Leighton, you've got to weave some magic to this jury. It's going to be all over. Montgomery is holding a book, The Secret Life of Bees. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Gamble. The only thing I've got to do is turn the jury around. It's to remind them of what they don't like about bees. You got the tweezers? Mr. Gamble nods and pats his breast pocket. Are you allergic? Only to losing, son. Only to losing. Montgomery approaches the stand. Mr. Benson B, I'll ask you what I think we'd all like to know. What exactly is your relationship with that woman? Montgomery points at Vanessa. We're friends. Good friends? Yes. How good? What? You live together? Wait a minute, this isn't about, are you her little bed bug? Hey, that's not the kind of, I've seen a bee documentary or two. Now, from what I understand, doesn't your queen give birth to all the bee children in the hive? Yeah, but, so those aren't even your real parents, Angle on Barry's parents. Oh, Barry. Yes, they are. Hold me back. Vanessa holds him back with coffee, sir. Montgomery points to Barry's parents. You are an illegitimate bee, aren't you, Benson? He's denouncing bees! All the bees in the courtroom start to hum. They're agitated. And you don't y'all date your cousins? Standing up, letting, uh, OBJECTION! 
Adam explodes from the table and flies towards Montgomery. I'm gonna pin cushion this guy. Montgomery turns around and positions himself by the judges bench. He sticks his butt out. Montgomery winks at his team. Duh, Adam, don't. That's what he wants. Adam shoves Barry out of the way. Adam stings Montgomery in the butt. The jury reacts to gas. Oh, I'm hit. Oh, lordy, I'm hit. The judge bangs her gavel. Order, order. Uh, please, Mr. Montgomery. The venom. The venom is coursing through my veins. I've been filled by a winged beast of destruction. You see, you can't treat them like equals. They're striped savages. Stinging's the only thing they know. It's their way. Angle on. Adam collapses on the floor. Barry rushes to his side. Adam, stay with me. I can't feel my legs. At, uh, Montgomery falls on the bailiff. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh, what an ain't. Oh, what angel of mercy will come forward to suck the poison from my heaving buttocks? The jury recoils. Please, I will have order in this court. Order, order, please. Interior hospital, street level room. Uh, the case of the honeybees versus the human race took a pointed turn against the bees yesterday when one of their legal teams stung Leighton T. Montgomery. Now here's Dawn with the five, with the five day. Uh, a nurse lets Barry into the room. Barry carries a flower. Thank you. Barry stands next to Adam in a bed. Barry lays on the, the flower ne down next to him. The TV is on. Hey, buddy. Hey. Is there much pain? Adam has a B-sized painkiller honey button near his head that he presses. Yeah, I blew the whole case, didn't I? Oh, it doesn't matter. The important thing is you're alive. You could have died. I'd be better off dead. Look at me. Adam throws a blanket off his lap, revealing a green sandwich sword stinger. They got it from the cafeteria. They got it from downstairs in a tuna sandwich. Look. A little celery still on it. What is it like stinging someone? I can't explain it. It was all adrenaline and then ecstasy. Barry looks at him. All right. You think this was all a trap? Of course. I'm sorry. I flew us right into this. What were we thinking? Look at us. We're just a couple of bugs in this world. What do you think the humans will do if they win? I don't know. I hear they put roaches in motels. That doesn't sound so bad. Adam, they check in, but they don't check out. Adam gulps. Ooh. Oh my. Angle on the hospital window. We see three people smoking outside on the sidewalk. The smoke drifts in. Adam coughs. Say, could you get a nurse to close that window? Why? The smoke. Bees don't smoke. Right. Bees don't smoke. Bees don't smoke! Bees don't smoke! Adam, that's it! That's our case! Adam starts pulling his putting his clothes on. It is? It's not over? No. Get up. Get dressed. I've got I've got to go somewhere. You uh, get back in the court and stall. Stall any way you can. Smoking gun. Interior courtroom the next day, Adam is folding a piece of paper into a boat. And assuming you've done step 29 correctly, you're ready for the tub. Angle on the jury, all with paper boats of their own. Ooh. Angle on Montgomery, frustrated with Gamel, who's making a boat also. Monty crumples Gamel's boat and throws it to him. Mr. Flamen? Yes, Your Honor? What is? Where's the rest of your team? Uh, well, Your Honor, it's interesting. You know, uh, bees are trained to fly kind of haphazardly, and, and as a result, quite often, we don't make very good time. I actually once heard a pretty funny story about a bee. Your Honor, haven't these ridiculous bugs taken up with the court's valuable time? Montgomery rolls up from behind his table. He's suspended in a large baby chair with wheels. How much longer are we going to allow these absurd shenanigans to go on? They have presented no compelling evidence to support their charges against my clients who have all run perfectly legitimate businesses. I move for a complete dismissal of this case. Mr. Flamen, I am afraid I'm going to have to consider Mr. Montgomery's motion. But you can't. We have a terrific case. Where is your proof? Where is your evidence? Show me the smoking gun. Barry bursts through the door. Hold it, Your Honor. You want a smoking gun? Here is your smoking gun. Vanessa enters holding a bee smoker. Vanessa slams the beekeeper's smoker onto the judge's bench. What is that? It's a bee smoker. Montgomery grabs the smoker. What's this? This harmless little contraption? This couldn't hurt a fly, let alone a bee. He unintentionally points it towards the bee gallery, knocking them all out. The jury gasps. The, the press snaps pictures of them. Members of the jury, look at what has happened to the... Uh, to bees who have never been asked smoking or not. Is this the nature intended for us? To be forcibly addicted to these smoke machines in man-made wooden slat work camps, living our lives as honey slaves to the white man? Ba Barry gestures dramatically towards Montgomery's racially mixed table. The black lawyer slowly moves his chair away. I... I don't remember that line. Ahem. <clears throat> uh... What are we what are we going to do? He's playing the species card. Barry lands on the scale of justice by the judge's bench. It balances as he lands. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please free these bees. Jury chanting. Free these bees. Free these bees. Free these bees. 
free these bees! Everybody, free these bees! Free these bees! The court finds in favor of the bees. The chaos continues. Barry flies over to Vanessa, his hands up for a high five. Vanessa, we won! Yay, I knew we could do it. High five. She high fives Barry, setting him crashing to the table. He bounces right back up. Oh, sorry. Ow! I'm okay. Vanessa, do you know what this means? All the honey is finally going to belong to the bees. Now he won't have to work so hard all the time. Montgomery approaches Barry, suspended, surrounded by the press. The cameras and microphone go to Montgomery. This is an unholy perversion of the balance of nature, Benson. You'll regret this. Barry's deer in headlights expression as the press pu pushes microphone in his face. Barry, how much honey do you think is out there? All right, all right, one at a time. Barry, what are you wearing? Uh, my sweater is Ralph Lauren, and I have no pants. The press follows Barry as he exits. Angle on Adam and Vanessa. What if Montgomery is right? What do you mean? We've been living the B way a long time. 27 million years. Barry and Vanessa have sex. Uh, honey Roundup. Exterior. Honey Farms Apiary. Montage. Congratulations on your victory. What are you going to demand as a settlement? First, we're going to demand a complete shutdown of all bee work camps. Then we want to get back to the honey, uh, we want to get back all the honey that was ours to begin with. Every last drop. We demand an end to the glorification of the bear as anything more than a filthy, smelly, big-headed, bad-breath stink machine. Uh, I believe we're all aware of what they do in the woods. We will no longer tolerate derogatory B-negative nicknames, unnecessary inclusion of honey in bogus health products, and la-di-da tea time human snack garnishments. Montage images. Close up of an ATF jacket with, a, uh, with the yellow letters. Camera pulls back. We see an army of bee and human agents wearing hastily made alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and honey jackets. Bees supervised. The gate to honey farms is locked permanently. All the smokers are collected and locked up. All the bees leave the apiary. Exterior, ATF outside of supermarket. Montage, agents begin yanking honey off the supermarket shelves and out of the shopping baskets. Exterior, New Hive City. Uh, montage, the bees tear down the honey bear statue. Exterior, Yellowstone Forest. Montage, POV of Sniper's Crosshair as an animated bear character lookalike turns his head towards the camera. Wait for my signal. Angle, Barry lowering his binoculars. Take him out. The sniper shoots the bear. It hits him in the shoulder. The bear looks at it. It gets woozy in the honey jar just fall out of his lap. The ATF and H agent catches it. ATF and H agent to the bear's pig friend. He'll have a little nausea for a few hours, then he'll be fine. Exterior, Sting's house. ATF and H agents clap cuffs on Sting, who is meditating. But it's just a prance about stage name. Interior, a woman's shower montage. A woman is taking a shower and using honey shampoo. An ATF and H agent pulls the shower curtain aside and grabs her bottle of shampoo. The woman screams. The agents turn to the three other agents and Barry. Barry, looking at the label on the shampoo, shaking his head and writing in his clipboard. Exterior, supermarket cafe, montage. Another customer, an old lady having her tea with a little jar of honey, gets her face pushed down onto the table and turned to the side of two by two agents. One of the agents has a gun to her. Can't breathe. Central Park montage. An oil drum of honey is connected. Wait! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Pause! 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 Hold on! There was no resolution to that scene. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt a live, a live production, but what the fuck? Hang on. Rewind. Exterior. Supermarket cafe. Another customer. An old lady having her tea with a little jar of honey. Gets her face pushed down onto the table and turned to the side by two agents. One of the agents has a gun on her. Old lady. Can't breathe. Cut to Central Park. That's it. That was the scene. That scene ended. I don't remember- okay, whatever. An oil drum of honey is connected to Barry's hive. Bring it in, boys! Sequence, no more work. Interior, Hunnix montage. Angle on. The honey goes past the three-cup hash mark and begins to overflow. Worker B runs up to Buswell. Mr. Buswell, we're, uh, we passed three cups. There's gallons more coming. I think we need to shut down. Shut down? We've never shut down. Buswell overlooking the factory floor. Shut down, honey production! Stop making honey! Two bees, each with a key. Uh, turn your key, sir. They turn the key simultaneously, wargame style, shutting down the honey machines. The taffy pull machines, centrifuge, and crawlmen all come to a stop. The bees look around, bewildered. What do we do now? Cannonball! He jumps into the honey vat, doesn't penetrate the surface. He looks around and slowly sinks down to his waist. 
Exterior, Hunnix Factory. The whistle blows. The bees all stream out the exit. Interior, J-Gate. Continuous. Lou LaDuca gives orders to the pollen jocks. We're shutting down honey production. Mission abort! Exterior, Central Park. Jackson received the orders mid-pollination. Aborting pollination and nectar detail. Returning to base. Exterior, New Hive City. Um, bees putting suntan lotion on their noses and antenna and sunning themselves on the balconies of the gyms. Exterior, Central Park. Angle on the flowers starting to droop. Interior, J-Gate. J-Gate is deserted. Exterior, New Hive City. Uh, hang on. I would like to say, um, first of all, I, I need to take a quick drink. Uh, second of all, we are at 100 pages into the script right now. I have literally, with the last hour and 18 minutes of my time, read the last 100 pages of B-Movie. We're almost done. Ahem. <clears throat> And here we continue the home stretch. I think there's like 30 pages left, something like that. <clears throat> Bees sunning themselves. A timer ding. A timer dings, and they all turn over. Exterior Central Park. Time lapse of Central Park turning brown. Vanessa's florist shop. Close up shot. Vanessa writes, "Sorry, no more flowers." On a closed sign, it turns it facing out. Idle hive. Exterior New Hive City. Day. Barry flies at high speeds, tracking shot into the hive through the lobby of Hunnix into Adam's office. Interior, Adam's office, continuous. Barry meets Adam in his office. Adam's office is in disarray. There are papers everywhere. He's filling up his cardboard hexagon box. Adam, you wouldn't believe how much honey was out there. Oh yeah? What's going on around here? Where is everybody? Aren't they out celebrating? No, they're just home. They don't know what to do. Hmm. They're laying out. They're sleeping in. I heard your Uncle Carl was on his way to San Antonio with a cricket. At least we got our honey back. They walk around the empty factory. Yeah, and sometimes I think, so what if the humans liked our honey? Who wouldn't? It's the greatest thing in the world. I was excited to be a part of making it. Adam's desk on its side in the hall. This was my desk. This was my new job. I wanted to do it really well. And now, now I can't. Adam exits. World without bees. Interior stairwell. Vanessa and Barry are walking up the stairs to the roof. I don't understand why they're not happy. We have so much now. I thought their lives would be better. Hmm. They're not doing it. They're doing nothing. It's amazing. Honey really changes people. You don't have any idea what's going on, do you? Well, did you want to show me? This. They reach the top of the stairs. Vanessa opens the door. They have sex on the roof. Barry sees Vanessa's flower pots and small garden have all turned brown. What's this here? What happened here? That's not... That is not the half of it. Vanessa turns Barry around with her two fingers, revealing a view of Central Park, which is also brown. Oh, no. Oh, my. They're all wilting. Doesn't look very good, does it? No. And whose fault do you think that is? Mmm... You know, I'm not, I'm gonna guess bees. Bees? Specifically me. I guess I didn't think bees not needing to make honey would affect all these other things. And it's not just flowers. Fruits, vegetables, they all need bees. Well, that's our whole SAT test right there. So, <laughs> you take away the produce, that affects the entire animal kingdom. And then, of course, the human species. Ahem. <clears throat> oh, so if there's no more pollination, it could go, it could all go south, couldn't it? Uh, and I know this is also partly my fault. Barry takes a long sigh. Ah, how about a suicide pact? How would we do it? I'll sting you, you step on me. It just kills you twice. Right, right. Listen, Barry. Sorry, I've got to get going. She exits. I didn't add that last part, by the way. Had to open my mouth and talk. Vanessa? Vanessa is gone. Going to Pasadena. Exterior, New York Street. Continuous. Vanessa gets into a cab. Barry enters. Vanessa, why are you leaving? Where are you going? The final tournament of roses parade in Pasadena. They moved it to this weekend because all the flowers are dying. It's the last chance I'll ever have to see it. Vanessa, I just want to say I'm sorry. I never meant to turn out like this. I know, me either. Vanessa's cab drives away. Tournament of roses. Roses can't do sports. Wait a minute. Roses? Roses? Vanessa! Barry follows shortly after. He catches up to it, and he pounds on the window. Barry follows shortly after Vanessa's cab. He catches up to it, and he pounds on the window. Uh... Interior ca taxi continuous. Barry motions her to roll down the window. She does so. Roses? Barry? Roses are flowers. Yes, they are. Flowers, bees, pollen. I know. That's why this is the last parade. Maybe not. The cab starts pulling ahead of Barry. Did you ask him to slow down? Could you slow down? The cab slows. Barry flies in the window and lands in the change box, which closes on him. Barry! Vanessa lets him out. Barry stands on the change box in front of the driver's license. Okay, I made huge mistakes. This is a total disaster, and it's all my fault. Yes, it kind of is. I've ruined the planet, and I wanted to help your flower shop. Instead, I've made it worse. Actually, it's completely closed down. Oh, I thought maybe you were remodeling. Nonetheless, I have another idea, and it's greater than all my previous great ideas combined. I don't want to hear it. Vanessa closes the change box on Barry. All right, 
here's what I'm thinking. They have the roses. The roses have the pollen. I know every bee plant and flower in this park. Um, all we got to do is get what they've got back here with what we've got. Bees, park, pollen, flowers, repollination across the nation. Rose parade, exterior, Pasadena parade. All right, turn around to roses. Pasadena, California. They've got nothing but flowers, floats, and cotton candy. Security will be tight. I have an idea. Exterior, float staging area. Angle on Barry and Vanessa approaching the heavily armed guard in front of the staging area. Vanessa Bloom, FTD, official floral business. He leans in to look at her badge. She snaps it shut. Oh, it's real. Sorry, ma'am. That's a nice brooch, by the way. Thank you. It was a gift. They enter the staging area. Uh, then once inside, we pick the right float. How about the princess and the pea? Yeah, I can be the princess and, yes, I think you could be. I've got the pea. Got it! Exterior, float staging area. A few moments later, Barry, dressed as a pea, flies up and hovers in front of the princess on the princess and the pea float. The float is sponsored by Inflatabed, and the sign reads Inflatabed. If it blows, it's ours. Sorry, I'm late. We should, where should I sit? Uh, what are you? I believe I'm the pea. The pea? It's supposed to be under the mattress. Not in this fairy tale, sweetheart. I'm gonna go talk to the marshal. You do that. This whole parade is a fiasco. She exits. Vanessa removes the stepladder. The princess falls. Barry and Vanessa take off in the float. Let's see what this baby will do. Guy with the headset uh, talking to drivers. Hey! The float zooms by. A young child in the stands, Timmy, cries. Cut to exterior, float staging area. A few moments later, angle on Vanessa putting the princess hat on. Uh, then all we do is blend in with the traffic without arousing suspicion. Exterior, the parade route, continuous. Uh, the float go- The floats go flying by the crowds. Barry and Vanessa's float crashes through the fence. Exterior, LA freeway. Barry- uh, Vanessa and Barry speed, dodging weaving down the freeway. And once we're at the airport, there's no stopping us. LAX airport. Barry and Vanessa pull up to the curb in front of the TSA agent with clipboard. Stop! Security! Uh, did you- Uh, did you and your insect pack- Your own- Insect pack your own float? Yes. Has this float been in the position the entire time? Since the parade. Yes. Barry holding his shoes. Would you remove your shoes and everything in your pockets? Can you remove your stinger, sir? That's part of me. I know, just having some fun. Enjoy your flight. Exterior, runway. Barry and Vanessa's airplane takes off. Then, uh, then, if we're lucky, we'll have just enough pollen to do the job. Cockpit fight. Interior, airplane. Vanessa is in the aisle. Barry and the, Barry and the laptop cal uh, calculating flowers, pollen, number of bees, airspeed. How does... He does a stomp dance on the keyboard. Can you believe how lucky we are? We just have enough pollen to do the job. I think this is going to work, Vanessa. It's got to work. Uh, attention, passengers. This is Captain Scott. I'm afraid we have a bit of bad weather in the New York area. and looks like we're going to be experiencing a couple hours delay. Barry, these, are, these cut flowers with no water. They'll never make it. Uh, we got to get up there and talk to these guys. Be careful. Barry flies up to the cockpit door. Interior cockpit continuous. A female flight attendant, Angela, is in the cockpit with the with the pilots. There's a knock at the door. Hey, can I get some help with this SkyMall magazine? I'd like to order the talking inflatable travel pool filter. Uh, excuse me. Exterior cabin continuous. Angela opens the cockpit door and looks around. She doesn't see anybody. Angle on Barry hidden in the yellow and black caution stripe. As Angela looks around, Barry zips into the cockpit. Interior cockpit. Excuse me, Captain. I'm in real situation here. Uh... What did you say, Hal? I didn't say anything. Ah, B! No, no, don't freak out. There's no chance my entire species... There's a chance my entire species... Ah! The pilot grabs a dustbuster vacuum cleaner. He aims it around and tries to vacuum up Barry. The co-pilot faces camera as the pilot tries to suck Barry up. Uh, Barry is on the other side of the co-pilot. As they do -si -do, a, uh, the toupee of the co-pilot begins to come up, still attached to the front. What are you doing? Stop! The toupee comes off the pilot's head and sticks in the dustbuster. Barry runs across the bald head. Wait a minute, I'm an attorney! Who's an attorney? Don't move! The pilot uses the dustbuster to try and mash Barry, who's hovering in front of the co-pilot's nose and knocks out the co-pilot, who falls out of his chair, hitting the life raft release button. The life raft inflates, hitting the pilot, knocking him into a wall out cold. Barry surveys the situation. Oh, Barry. Interior, airplane cabin. Vanessa studies her laptop, looking serious. PA crackle. Uh, good afternoon, passengers. This is your captain speaking. Would a Miss Vanessa Bloom and 24F please report to the cockpit and, uh, please hurry? <laughs> More like Barry will be reporting to the cockpit. Angle on the aisle. Uh, Vanessa heads popping up. Interior cockpit. Vanessa enters. What happened here? I tried to talk to them, but there was a dustbuster, a toupee, a life raft exploded. Now one's bald, one's in a boat, and they're both unconscious. Is that, is that another B joke? No. No, no, no one's flying the plane. The air traffic controller, Bud, speaks over the radio. This is JFK Control Tower, Flight 356. What's your status? Vanessa presses a button and the intercom comes on. This is Vanessa Bloom. I'm a florist from New York. What's, uh, where's the pilot? He's unconscious, and so is the co-pilot. Not good. Is there anyone on board who has flight experience? As a matter of fact, there is. Who's that? Barry Benson. From the Honey Trail? Oh, great. Vanessa, there's, there's nothing, this is nothing more than a big giant metal bee. It's got wings? Huge engines? I can't fly a plane. Why not? Isn't John Travolta a pilot? Yes. How hard could it be? 
Wait a minute, Barry. We're headed into some lightning. Vanessa shrugs and takes the controls. Barry flies plane. Interior, Benson House. The family is huddled around a TV at the Benson House. Uh, angle on TV. Bob Bumble is broadcasting. This is Bob Bumble. We have some late breaking news from JFK Airport, where a very suspenseful scene is developing. Barry Benson, fresh off his stunning legal victory. Adam sprays a can of Honey Whip into his mouth. That's Barry! Is now attempting to land a plane loaded with people, flowers, and incapacitated flight crew. Flowers? Interior of the air traffic control tower. Well, we have an electrical storm in the area and two individuals at the controls of a jumbo jet with absolutely no flight experience. Wait a minute, Mr. Ditchwater. Uh, there's a honeybee on that plane. Oh, I'm quite familiar with Mr. Benson's work and his no-account compadres. Haven't they done enough damage already? But isn't, but isn't he your only hope right now? Come on, technically a bee shouldn't be able to fly at all. Interior cockpit. Barry reacts. The wings are too small. Their body's too big. Hey, hold on a second. Haven't we heard this a million times? The surface area of the wings and the body mass doesn't make sense. Uh, get this on the air. You got it. Interior, BTV control room. An engineer throws a switch. Stand by, we're going live. The on-air signs illuminate. Interior, various shots of New Hive City. The news report plays on TV. The pollen jocks are sitting around, playing paddle ball, Wheelo, and one of them is spinning his helmet on his finger. Buzzwell is in an office cubicle, playing computer solitaire. Barry's family and Adam watch from their living room. Bear's sitting on the street curb, turn around to watch the TV. Mr. Ditchwater, the way we work may be a mystery to you, because making honey takes a lot of bees doing a lot of small jobs. But let me tell you, let me tell you something about a small job. If you do it really well, it makes a big difference. More than we realized. To us. To everyone. That's why I want to get bees back to doing what we do best. Working together. And that's the bee way. We're not made of jello. We get behind a fellow. Black and yellow. Hello. Barry giving orders to Vanessa. Left. Left. Down. Hover. Hover? Forget hover. You know what? This isn't so hard. Vanessa pretends to honk the horn. Beep, 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 beep. A bolt of lightning hits the plane. They all die. Just kidding. The plane takes a sharp dip. What ha Barry, what happened? Wait a minute. I think we were on autopilot the whole time. That may have been helping me. And now we're not. Well, then it turns out I cannot fly a plane. Vanessa struggles with the yoke. Uh, exterior airplane. The airplane goes into a steep dive. Crash landing. Interior, J-gate. An alert sign reading, Hive alert. We need, uh, there is a signal goes from two bees, some bees, every bee there is. Lou LaDuca gathers the pollen jocks at J-gate. All of you, let's get behind this fellow. Move it out. The bees move, the bees follow Lou, Lou LaDuca and exit J-gate. Interior, cock, uh, airplane cockpit. Our only chance is if, uh, is if I do what I would do, uh, and you copy me with the wings of the plane. You don't have to yell. I'm not yelling. Uh, we just happen to be in a lot of trouble here. It's very hard to, to concentrate with that panicky tone in your voice. It's not a tone. I'm panicking. Exterior, JFK Airport. Angle on. The bees arriving in mass uh, and massing to the airport. Barry and Vanessa alternatively slap each other in the face. I don't think I can do this. Vanessa, pull yourself together. Listen to me. You've got to step out of it. You step out of it. Uh, you step out of it. You step out of it. You step out of it. Exterior, airplane. A gigantic swarm of bees flies in and holds the plane up. Interior cockpit continuous. You snap out of it. You snap out of it. You snap. Hold it. Uh, about to slap her again. Why? Come on. It's my turn. How's this plane flying? Barry's antennas ring. Uh, I don't know. Hello? Exterior airplane. Angle on the underside of the plane. The pollen jocks have all massed around the underbelly of the plane and are holding it up. Hey, Benson! Have you got any flowers for a happy occasion in there? Interior cockpit. Lou, Buzz, Spitz, and Jackson come up alongside the cockpit. The pollen jocks! They do get behind a fellow. Black and yellow. Overhead set. Hello. All right, you two. What can you, uh, what do you say we drop this tin can on the blacktop? What blacktop? Where? I can't see anything. Can you? No, nothing. It's all cloudy. Exterior runway. Adam shouts. Come on, you've got to think, B. Uh, you got to think, B, Barry. Thinking, B. Thinking, B. Uh, overhead shot of the runway. The bees are in formation of a flower. In unison, they move, causing the flower to flash yellow and black, chanting, Thinking B, thinking B, thinking B, thinking B. Interior cockpit. We see through a swirling mist of clouds. A giant shape of a flower is forming in the middle of the runway. Wait a minute, I think I'm feeling something. What? I don't know, but it's strong, and it's pulling me, like 27 million year old instinct. Bring the nose of the plane down. Exterior runway. All the bees are on the runway, chanting, Thinking B, thinking B. Cut to interior control tower. What in the world is on the tarmac? Uh, Dave OTS onto runway, uh, seeing a flower being formed by millions of bees. Uh, get some lights on that. Exterior runway. Angle on aircraft landing light scaffold by the uh, side of the runway, illuminating the bees in their flower formation. Interior cockpit. Vanessa, aim for the flower. Oh, okay. Cut the engines. Cut the engines. We're going on bee power. Ready, boys? Affirmative. Airplane cockpit. Good, good. Easy now. 
Uh, land on that flower. Ready, boys? Give me full reverse. Spin it around. The plane attempts to land on top of the Aloha Airlines plane with flowers painted on it. I mean giant black and yellow pulsating flower made of millions of bees. Which flower? I'm aiming at the flower. The plane flies after a fat guy in a Hawaiian shirt. That's a fat guy in a flowered shirt. The other flower, the big one. He snaps a photo and runs away. Uh, full forward. Ready, boys? Nose down. Bring your tail up. Rotate it around. Oh, this is insane, Barry. This is the only way I know how to fly. Air traffic control tower. I am, I am cuckoo kachu, or am I cuckoo kachu, or is this plane flying in an insect-like pattern? Exterior runway. Get your nose in there. Don't be afraid of it. Smell it. Full reverse. Easy. Just drop it. Be a part of it. Aim for the center. Now drop it in. Drop it in, woman! The plane hummers and, and maneuvers, landing it in the center of the giant flower like a bee. The flowers from the cargo hold spill out onto the runway. Interior airplane cabin. The passengers are motionless for a beat. Come on already! They hear ding ding and jump up to grab their luggage from the overheads. Yeah, because they were waiting to get off the plane. Runway speech. Exterior runway. Continuous. The inflatable slides pop out of the slide side of the plane, and passengers escape. Barry and Vanessa slide down out of the cockpit. Barry and Vanessa exhale a huge breath. Barry, we did it. You taught me how to fly. Vanessa raises her hand for a high five. Yeah, no high five. Right. Barry, it worked. Did you see the giant flower? What giant flower? Where? Of course I saw the giant flower. That was genius, man. Genius. Thank you, but we're not done yet. Barry flies up to the wing of the plane and addresses the bee crowd. Listen, everyone. This runway is covered with the last pollen from the last flowers available anywhere on Earth. That means this is our last chance. We're the only ones who make honey, pollinate flowers, and dress, li and dress like this. If we're going to survive as a species, this is our moment. So what do y'all say? Are we all, are, are we going to be bees or just Museum of Natural History keychains? We're bees. Keychain, keychain bee. Keychain. Then follow me, except keychain. Hold on, Barry. You've earned this. Buzz puts a pollen jock jacket and helmet with Barry's name on it on Barry. Uh, I'm a pollen jock, and it's a perfect fit. All I've got to do now, all I've got to do now are the sleeves. The pollen jocks toss Barry a gun. Oh, oh, a pollen gun. Okay. Oh, yeah. Angle on Martin and Janet Benson. That's our Barry. All the bees descend on the flowers on the tarmac and start collecting the pollen. Repollination. Exterior. Skies. Continuous. The squadron flies over the city, repollinating trees and flowers as they go. Barry breaks off from a group towards Vanessa's flower shop. Exterior. Vanessa's flower shop. Continuous. Barry repollinates Vanessa's flowers. Uh... Exterior. Central Park. Continuous. Angle on. Timmy with a frisbee as, as, the, as the bees flies by. Mom, these bees are back! Central Park is completely repollinated by the bees. Dissolved to. Interior. Hunnix. Continuous. Uh, Hunnix is back to normal and everyone is busily working. Angle on. Adam. Putting his Krellman hat on. If anyone needs to make a call, now's the time. I've got a feeling we'll be working late tonight. The bees cheer. Exterior. Vanessa's flower shop. With a new sign out front. Vanessa and Barry. Flowers, honey, legal advice. Dissolved to. Flower counter. Vanessa is doing brisk trade with many customers. Interior. Flower shop. Continuous. Vanessa is selling flowers. In the background, there are shelves stocked with honey. Don't forget these... Uh, have a great afternoon. Yes. Can I help? Who's next? Who's next? Would you like to, some honey with that? It is be approved. Sign on the back uh, room door reads, Barry Benson, insects at law. Camera moves to the back room. Angle on Barry. Barry's cow client. Milk, cream cheese? It's all me. I don't, and I don't see a nickel. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sometimes I just feel like a piece of meat. I had no idea. Barry, I'm sorry. Have you got a moment? Would you excuse me? My mosquito associate here with, uh, will be able to help you. Uh, Moose Blood enters. Sorry I'm late! He's a lawyer too? Ma'am, I was already a blood-sucking parasite. All I needed was a briefcase. Uh, angle on a flower counter. Have a great afternoon. Barry, I just got this huge tulip order for a wedding. I can't, uh, and I can't get them anywhere. No problem, Vanny. Just leave it to me. Vanessa turns to deal with a customer. You're a lifesaver, Barry. Uh, can I help who's next? Who's next? And, uh, Vanessa's smiling back at Barry. Barry smiles too, then snaps himself out of it. All right, scramble jocks. It's time to fly. Thank you, Barry. Flower shop continuous. Angle on Ken and Andy walking down the street. Ah, oh, what in the world? It's that bee again. Let's go get it, Kenny. That bee is living my life. When will this nightmare end? Let it all out. They don't break stride. Angle on camera in front of Barry as he flies out the door and up into the sky. Paul and jocks fold in formation behind him as he zooms into the park. Beautiful day to fly. Sure is. Between you and me, I was dying to get out of that office. Fade out. And that, and that, my friends, is the entirety of DreamWorks' 2007 B-movie. Thank you.
That's another goal down. We fucking did it. Actually? Wait a minute. How long is that movie? I think it took... Hang on. B-movie runtime. An hour and 35 minutes. That was almost exactly the, the length of time that the actual movie is. We did it. Wait, did I have to do two dabs? Hang on. Ugh, ugh. There you go. Okay, hang on. I think I have some people to thank. Hold on. Hang on. I got it. Hey, Shock Beats. 100 bonus pen clap. Shock Beats. Thank you so much. Uh, for the bits. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay. Let me start from the beginning here. Because I think things were happening during that entire... Uh, okay. Uh, whoops! Thank you for the resub. Um, Meowdy Noe, thank you for the resub. Everybody's friend Kirby, thank you for the resub. Barry, thank you for the resub. Miss Tweedums, thank you for giving a sub to Bath and Jan. Uh... <laughs> Thank you for all those resubs. Uh, Oblivious to me. Thank you for gifting those five subs. Uh, Isayana. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the subscription. Heaven or hell. <laughs> Duel. Duel. One. One. Let's, let's rock. rock. Um, let's see. Uh, Crybaka. Thank you for the bits. Uh, Barry. Thank you for the host. Bias. Thank you for the bits. Star. Thank you for the bits. Or uh, sorry, Star. Star. Thank you for the resub. Sorry, my brain's all all mashed up now. Uh, my, my brain is, is turned into honey. Melmole, thank you for the 25 bits. Carly Nicole, thank you for gifting that sub to Danny. Um, Orca Blubber, thank you for the resub. Steven X, thank you for the resub. Heaven, Heaven or, or hell. hell. Duel. Duel. One. One. Let's, Let's rock. rock. Bias, thank you for the bits. Doppel, thank you for the soul steal on All is Lost. <laughs> uh, Asabeth, thank you for the resub. Um, Heaven Jenny or Betty, hell. Duel. 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 thank one. you for the 500 one. bits. Mail Malay, thank you for the magical. 100. Thank you so much. Uh, Shock Beats, thank you for the 100. That'll uh, be four bucks, baby! You want fries with that? That was a treat, thank you. No more gentlemen, thank you for the 400 bits. Shock Beats, thank you for the 100. Martha, thank you for the 10. Uh, Pumpkin Dead, thank you for giving that sub to Queen Leo of Animals. And Jetty Betty, thank you for the 45 months. Thank you so much. <laughs> Seriously, um, do we really have 400 fucking people watching me do that? That can't be right. <laughs> Terminator 100 bonus. Then that was awesome. How was Universal? I look, look, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm. I was not. I was not looking at chat. And only sort of vaguely looking at OBS, the whole time I was focused on the performance. I was really in the performance. I was like, I was really, I was living it. I was becoming the B. Where did I get that script? Legitimately right there. It's the entire Heaven script. Or hell. Hell. Duel. 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 One. One. Let's, Let's rock. rock. Kick down the door, sup, motherfunker. Uh, Doppel, what's up? Thank you for the 25 months. It is testing week, and it's time to slay all day. Yeet! Stay, Stay woke, woke, be on fleek, and, and get, get that, that Gucci, Gucci breakfast. Goals! Say bye, bye Felicia, Felicia, to that, that testing stress. stress. Weather's, Weather's gonna, gonna be turnt, turnt, right, Chris? Yes! Terminator 4200 bonus for 20. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take a quick break, uh, but when it- wow. I can't believe we actually banged out another sub goal. When I come back, I was going to continue Castlevania. I don't know if people, probably people aren't as interested in that. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need a quick break. 66 bonus 66. Little bit. Terminator 1000 bonus 100. This is the kind of quality <laughs> streaming content I signed up for. Daver boy, thank Heaven you for the 666. Duel, duel, one, one. Let's, Let's rock. rock. That was an experience. <laughs> you earned a resub for sure. English breakfast tea, thank you for the three months. <laughs> uh, Igor's, thank you for the 4200 bits. 
And uh, Stiletto, thank you for the 1,000. I seriously appreciate that. Thank you. Honestly. I just... Okay, so let me let me be real. I didn't think we'd hit any of the goals from my sub... Well, I didn't think we'd hit any of the later goals from the subathon. Uh, so the fact that we hit all of them except the Homestuck one... Yeah, let me Duel. be Duel. real. All or nothing. Neon Knife TV, thank you for the six months. I appreciate that. <laughs> Wait, what was... Yeah. We hit all of them. Okay, so so far I've done 50 Nugget Challenge, Red Bee Movie, 10 Hours of Creeper. I have to make the... I'm working on the, on the Minecraft song. I have to do the Fortnite stream. And the, the Tifa cosplay should be early next month. Nuggets was done during the subathon. Wow, this actually shouldn't be too hard to finish. Little that bands. Fortnite one's gonna be hard. Terminator 100 bonus. Then did you drive in that outfit? It's funny you say that, Igor. No, I actually had it shipped to the office. But I will tell you this. I am like... I'm fucking... Like... Melting in this thing. I have to take this thing off. Okay, hang on. Let me... Let me... Let me take a break. Let me take a break and get some water, rehydrate, uh, and order dinner because I'm hungry. Uh, and then we'll swap, maybe swap over to Castlevania or something. I mean, I didn't have anything else planned. We did it. I read the whole B-movie script. I finished it. We, that was it. Okay, hang on. I'll BRB.